The summer of 2007, when I was 10 years old, the family and I had a trip to Disneyland planned. Our flight was booked for midnight on a Tuesday to save money, and my mom figured my sisters and I would sleep through the flight. My sisters were 8 and 5 at the time. The gatehouse was for the most part empty as we waited for our flight. My mom went to go to the bathroom with my youngest sister, and a minute later my dad told me to wait there and watch my other sister while he went to get a last minute bite to eat at the cafe as a middle-aged woman came and sat next to us. She put her hand on my back as she acted all excited to see us and asked where our parents were. I told her they would be right back. Then a middle-aged man came over as well and started acting just as bubbly and affectionate towards us as if he knew us. The man then proclaimed that he just ran into my dad at the cafe and finally introduced himself and the woman as our dad's cousins. My sister and I looked at each other and we both said hello really shyly. The man reached out his hand for my sister to grab, while the woman reached out her hand for me to grab. They told us to follow them because they wanted us to meet their kids. My sister and I naively got up, took their hands, and followed them. The two started leading us out of the gatehouse, past the cafe, down the stairs, and towards the lobby of the airport. When I realized they were leading us to the entrance of the airport, towards the parking lot, I finally asked, where are we going? The woman looked at me through her thick framed glasses and with her cheeky smile said their kids were outside by the car. As we walked outside into the dark parking lot, I looked at my sister and became really uncomfortable. I broke my hand free from the woman and said we wanted to go back inside, while also taking my sister's hand from the man's. I noticed the two looked at each other, their cheeky smiles both gone. The man turned quickly to us and then aggressively wrapped his arms around me as the woman did the same to my sister. They started to literally carry us closer to the parking lot as me and my sister screamed. We heard yelling in the distance from two men who turned out to be airport security. The crazed pair let us go and ran quicker than I'd ever seen anyone run, quickly disappearing into the parking lot. One of the men chased them down, or at least tried to, while the other talked with us for a bit, then led us back into the airport, back to our parents and other sister. It had only been a few minutes and my mom was already sobbing like a baby. Being that I was so young makes this a really weird and uncomfortable memory to think about. It's also weird to think that I didn't see any red flags go off when the two didn't give us their names. It was minutes before boarding my flight to North Carolina for a job interview the next day. It was on a stormy February night. Everyone was bundled up and keeping to themselves. I was sitting in the terminal room waiting for my flight to be called. It wasn't going to be a very busy flight because there weren't many people in the waiting area. Someone sat down two seats away from me, which wasn't too weird itself but also was a bit annoying considering most of the seats were open but it went from annoying to downright disturbing when I looked at him to see him weirdly staring at me. I looked away and pretended not to care, but I could tell he was still looking at me. Then he leaned over to me and whispered close to my ear that the two men sitting a row across from me were going on the same plane and were planning on kidnapping me once we landed in North Carolina. I didn't know what to say other than what? The heavy man then got up and walked away. At the same time my flight was called, and I nervously boarded the plane while paying attention to the two men. They sat down ahead of me, and as I walked past them approaching my seat, they both stared me down. At that moment I started to wonder if that man's warning were true. A few hours later we arrived to NC, and on my way out of the plane and leaving the airport, I cautiously looked around trying to spot the two men. When I was finally outside in the dark, cold parking lot, I spotted them. The two men were peering their heads at me from around a red minivan, and I guess when they saw me looking in their direction they hid behind the van. 
I walked back inside of the airport, waited half an hour, called for a taxi, waited for it to pull up front, and rode to my hotel. So many questions. I don't know who that man was who warned me. I don't know how he knew of those other two men. And I have no idea what they were planning on doing to me, if they were actually looking to kidnap me. So this happened a few months ago. I'm 26. I was at JFK Airport in New York with five friends. All of us were about to fly down to Florida to spend the week in a beach house. We had a few more minutes to kill in the airport before we would board our flight, and I really had to go to the bathroom all of a sudden. I was baffled to see a line out the door for the bathroom. I noticed a janitor walking by, so I asked her if there was another bathroom nearby that wouldn't be so crowded. She left and told me she shouldn't really be telling people but there was another bathroom past the door she was pointing at, down a narrow flight of stairs and to the left. I thanked her because she was extremely nice and followed the direction she gave me. Sure enough, behind that door that no one would think to open was a small stairway that led down to a really poorly lit, skinny hallway. It was so narrow that if two people were to pass by each other, one person would have to stand against the wall to make room. I found the bathroom right away. The door was extremely heavy and hard to push. Also, the lights were on inside of the bathroom, and it was filthy in there. It was evident that nobody ever really came in there to clean. Now, this is a little embarrassing to mention, but when I go to the bathroom in public places, I always try to make sure nobody else is around to possibly hear me going. So after checking the stall to see that it was unoccupied, I went back into the hallway for a second to take a look down both directions. To the left, there was somebody standing at the end of the hall, in a dark, unlit section of the hallway. It was a disturbing sight to say the least. All I could do was awkwardly pull my head back into the bathroom and try to pretend we didn't see each other. I went into the stall and just stood there biting my fingers for a minute, dreading the thought of that door opening. And of course, it did. I saw the man's black shoes under the stall door as he walked to the stall next to mine. He shut the door and then there was silence. No sound of the man unzipping his fly or sitting down, nothing. I realized I didn't really have to go anymore and went to unlock the stall door. That's when I looked up and saw the man's head peering over the stall looking at me. I nearly had a heart attack as my screams bounced off the walls of the tiny bathroom. I ran back up those damn steps and out that door and then casually walked back over to my friends. I was breathing heavily but nobody seemed to notice. I didn't tell anyone just because it was embarrassing and I didn't want my friends to make fun of me in any way. I know, I guess that seems stupid now. We went on to have our Florida vacation and all had a good time. Of course, the thought of that creepy man haunted me every night that week. My wife recently took a trip to California with a few of her girlfriends. I was her ride to the airport, and I was there for her ride back from the airport as well. I waited around in the lobby for a while. Her flight ran a little behind schedule, so it was about 15 minutes late. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw my wife Michelle and her four friends heading over in my direction. Michelle waved happily and ran over to give me a big hug and kiss. I said hello to all of her friends as well. Michelle suddenly started patting her pockets, and a concerned expression appeared on her face. She looked at me and told me she lost her wallet and keys. So Michelle and I, along with one of her friends who was kind enough to help out, all went back up to the terminal and looked everywhere. We asked one of the airport workers to have the plane checked for a wallet and keys. Long story short, we spent a great deal of time looking around the airport to find nothing. She insisted she had both the wallet and keys after she left the plane, though. Eventually, we had to call it quits and went home. A worker assured us that if the items came up, we would be contacted immediately. Michelle was in a sour mood the whole ride home because of it. When we got home, Michelle went up to our room, and I could hear her throw her giant bag onto the bed all the way from downstairs as I was in the kitchen about to make a quick snack for myself. 
That was when the scream of my wife from upstairs hit me cold in the chest. I ran to our room to see her pointing at the bathroom door. I looked at it and then the two closet doors across the room. They'd both been opened and all of our personal belongings had been thrown all over the floor. Boxes opened with papers that were once in them scattered all over the floor. She stuttered out the words, there's someone in the bathroom to me. I felt like my heart stopped in response to those words, but I had to be the man of the house and step up. I tried the doorknob to the bathroom, but of course it was locked. Michelle left the room in a hurry, which I later found out she did to call the cops downstairs. I started ramming at the weak old door with my shoulder, and after five solid hits I busted the door down. Only the bathroom was empty, and the window was jammed completely open, wide enough for someone to squeeze through. I comforted Michelle until the cops arrived, and listening to her description to the cops was bone chilling. She had just thrown her bag onto the bed, not even having noticed the closets yet, and out of nowhere felt something brush up past her. When she turned, she saw a massively tall man walking to the bathroom, staring at her the whole time with wide eyes and a blank expression. She was only able to get a scream out after the man locked himself into the bathroom. It's safe to say he found my wife's keys and wallet and saw an easy opportunity to break into a house. We had our locks changed the next day and never saw the man again.